everyone. Welcome to the show. So as you guys all know, there were a bunch of bomb threats that were sent to polling places, also vote tabulation facilities on election day. And it was worse than we even knew. So the day after the election, I'd shared with you, there were reports out there that 38 threats were received in the state of Georgia. Well, now the Georgia Secretary of State is saying, no, there were actually more than 60 bomb threats that day. Um, we're also now finding out the threats did not stop after the election. So NBC News just reported that bomb threats were received at the voter registration offices in Orange County and Riverside County. Um, these are neighboring counties in Southern California. And California, as you guys probably know, they're notoriously slow at counting ballots because they allow for ballots to be counted that if they're received up to five days after the election, as long as they're postmarked by election day. So the bomb threats, of course, forced the evacuation of these buildings. And it temporarily halted the counting. This was on Friday night. Uh, no bombs were found. And this wasn't the only location that received these bomb threats. So Los Angeles County also received a bomb threat last weekend. Officials said that this was at the headquarters of the LA County Registrar and Recorder's Office. Um, they received the bomb threat on Saturday, which was sent via email. This was you know, very similar to the threats on election day. Once again, the threat wasn't credible, but again, the building had to be evacuated. You know, election workers were sent home, actually, and they didn't return until Tuesday because Monday was a holiday. It was Veterans Day. So that puts the counting behind. Um, the San Diego Register of, uh, Registrar of Voters also received a bomb threat on Friday evening. Uh, for anybody, you know, in another state or in another country, that is also San Diego County is located in Southern California. It's down uh, so south of Orange County. But the bomb threats were not limited to Southern California. So Santa Clara County also received a bomb threat on Friday night. That's a it's a, a more blue county as well, um, but it's located along the coast or near the coast, but it's in the middle of the state. So it's not Southern California, it's Central California. That threat was also determined to be a hoax. Luckily it was because the employees didn't even catch it until Saturday morning. So it was sent in like the others on Friday night, but they didn't catch it till Saturday morning. Now the workers were evacuated when they showed up to work Saturday. Police swept the entire facility. Um, this is also happening in Maryland. Officials in that state said that the threats were sent to 15 different offices on Friday. And they also had to be evacuated. They were checked by authorities. Um, so all of these facilities, all of these counties and, and states are now working with the FBI. And a local Fox affiliate reported that the emails originated overseas. Now, we all know, you know, in today's day and age, emails can easily be routed through international servers. They can easily mislead investigators about the location of the sender. So I don't know if I'm buying that, uh, but for right now, that's all we know. Uh, the state of Minnesota has also reported bomb threats being received. Their Secretary of State says that more than half of their county offices have received threats. Um, that was since Friday of last week. So dozens of offices in Minnesota were threatened in that state. Once again, they were submitted via email. The offices were evacuated. You know, they were all searched. Nothing was found. And, you know, this seems to be the point, just slowing down, trying to disrupt the counting of the ballots. That's why I'm not so sure that these threats are coming from overseas, because as of now, as of today, Trump has a lead of about three million as in regard to the popular vote. It's the first time a Republican has won the popular vote in a very, very long time. And so MAGA, for a couple reasons, you know, they, they want Trump to maintain a, a large vote margin um, because they want to claim 
oh, look how popular he is, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, this, this, and they also want to say he has an overwhelming mandate, right? So whatever cruel, insane thing he does, they want to be able to say, well, the majority of the country wanted this. Um, but his lead has been dwindling. You might recall, you know, on election night, it was like 5 million votes, I want to say. And like I said, it's now down to 3 million. So as larger states, especially the largest state in the union, California, as they, you know, we've been submitting uh, the voting totals from that state, it, it's shrinking, you know, he's got shrinkage. <laughs> so it's going to continue to shrink. And they know that because as of today, there are still a lot of ballots that haven't been counted in blue states that you know went for Harris. So for example, 14% of the vote is still outstanding in California. There are still 11% outstanding in Oregon. Um, Hawaii hasn't counted 10% of their ballots yet. Maryland, as of today, has 9% outstanding. Now, of course, there's gonna be some votes for Trump in there, but not as many because you guys might know predominantly democratic states um, or democratic voters i should say they like to vote by mail right mail-in ballots typically favor democrats by and large democrats prefer to just throw it in the mail a lot of times late especially in california you know people are very laid back here and so yeah voting is slow so um or, or the reception of the ballots is slow. So you, what always happens, you always see Democratic candidates gaining on their Republican challengers or pulling ahead even more when the mail-in ballots are counted. What cracks me up is, I don't know if you guys heard about this or saw this, but on Twitter, I think it was about a week or two before the election, Marjorie Taylor Greene posted on Twitter and she said something to the effect of, oh, California and New York are going to go red this year. They're going to go for Trump. Mark my words. <laughs> oh, God, if I had a nickel for every time that woman was wrong. Oh, boy. Yeah. In the words of, of one of their heroes, Nick Fuentes, who she hung out with, um, not going to happen, sweetie. Yeah, California will never, never be a red state. Not going to happen. <laughs> you know, maybe if you speak in their language, maybe if you say it like their heroes, they'll they'll get it. Unlikely, but we'll see. Anyway, <laughs> I will keep you posted. I'll let you all know when I hear more. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Please like, please share and subscribe. Please donate if you can. Love you all. Take care. Talk with you soon.